So now that we have both the surplus that the firm derives from having a worker and the surplus that the worker derives from having a job, we, be, we are able to figure out what is the wage that comes out from that um, surplus sharing uh, bargaining procedure. So now we can compute the wage <coughs> from surplus sharing. So what is that wage? So we know that the wage is such that the worker keeps a uh, fraction beta of the total surplus and the firm keeps a fraction one minus beta of the total surplus. So the firm surplus, which is curly F, is going to be a fraction one minus beta <coughs> of the total surplus and the worker surplus W is going to be a fraction beta of total surplus. So now if we eliminate the total surplus from these equations, what we see is that uh, the firm surplus is going to be 1 minus beta over beta times the worker surplus. Okay, uh, so that's just by eliminating, you know, you can get that directly uh, by taking the ratio of the, of the two equations that we have here. Okay, um, so the firm surplus may be bigger or smaller than the worker surplus depending on the size of the bargaining power beta. But now we can plug in uh, the result that we had. So the firm surplus, we know that it's the marginal product of labor minus the wage divided by S. That's going to be equal to 1 minus beta over beta times the worker surplus. And that we just said was the wage minus the value from uh, unemployment divided by S plus F of theta. Right, so um, what we can do here is that we can multiply both sides by W here and we can also multiply both sides by S plus F of theta. So I can get rid of that here and uh, erase this. Here I can have S plus F of theta. Okay, um, so once I do that, so what do I get? So I'm going to get that 1 minus beta W minus Z, that comes from um, the right hand side. It's going to be equal to um, beta times 1 plus F of theta divided by S times MPL minus W. Okay, so um, this is an equation that implicitly defines W, the surplus sharing solution to the bargaining problem. Okay, so now the goal is to reshuffle terms so that we can isolate what the wedge is that comes out of this surplus sharing procedure. Um, so here I can develop things a little bit, so I get 1 minus beta W um, and then I've got minus 1 minus beta Z that's going to be equal, so here if I separate things a little bit <coughs> I get beta MPL minus beta W plus beta f of theta divided by s mpl minus w so here what i did is i developed uh, the right hand side so i had beta uh, times 1 times mpl beta times 1 times w that i subtracted um, and then i kept the f of theta divided by s and i multiplied by mpl minus w okay so now i can reshuffle things around a little bit so in particular, you can see here I have 1 minus beta w, here I have minus beta w. Once I take this thing on the other side, I'll get w, and that's going to be equal to 1 minus beta z. That's uh, what comes from here. Plus beta 
npm, which was there already on the right hand side, plus here I have a slightly more complicated term, beta f of theta minus by s, npm minus w. Now what we learned from uh, earlier work is that uh, firms, of course, they are always maximizing profit. When the firm maximizes profit, we know that there is a first order condition that holds, that says that uh, you know, profits are maximized, and that first order condition, what we said is that it was that the marginal product of labor was equal to 1 plus tau times W. Basically, marginal product of labor is equal to the marginal cost of labor. Um, and so, if NPL is equal to 1 plus tau times W, NPL minus W here, that's going to be equal to tau <coughs> times um, W, which is tau theta times um, W. Okay, so uh, we can simplify this expression a little bit. That says that the wage is going to be 1 minus beta z plus beta marginal product of labor. Mm -hmm. Plus beta times f of theta, tau of theta, all of this is going to be divided by s times w. Okay. To analyze there, uh, now we just need to simplify a little bit the last term. So, tau of theta, Remember that it's R S divided by Q of theta minus R S. Okay. Um, so tau of theta so tau of theta divided by s times f of theta. Oh, what we also remember is that f of theta is equal to theta q of theta with, for any matching function with a um, constant return to scale. So tau of theta, f of theta divided by s, which we have here, that's going to be equal to r, the s disappear, f of theta divided by q of theta minus r s, and that is going to be equal to R times theta times Q of theta divided by Q of theta minus Rs. Okay, and, and then that's just going to be equal to so tau of theta f of theta s is just going to be equal to R times theta times uh, 1 plus Rs divided by Q of theta minus Rs. Right, because 1 plus Rs divided by Q of theta minus Rs, that's just um, Q of theta. It's just what we've seen, it's just this. It's just Q of theta divided by Q of theta minus Rs. And um, hence, tau of theta f of theta divided by s that's just r times theta times 1 plus tau of theta. Okay, so we've um, greatly simplified this fraction to just get r theta 1 plus tau of theta. Now if we plug that in our equation above here, instead of this thing here, what we're going to obtain is that, right, what we're going to obtain, if we have that here, we're going to obtain that W is equal to 1 minus beta Z plus beta NPL plus beta r 
theta 1 plus tau of theta w with w coming from the end there. Okay, but 1 plus tau of theta w using again the first order condition, so this thing, this we know that that's just the marginal product of labor. Okay, uh, so now we have a much, much simpler expression for the wage. So the wage is 1 minus beta times z plus beta times the marginal product of labor times 1 plus r theta. And here is that our surplus sharing solution to the bargaining problem. Okay. 